All right. It's going to be real brief, but I think it's going to be worth it because this is something that you're going to see all the time when you look at flexor printing at some level, okay? Just like you see a halo, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're going to okay. see this manifest at some level. All right. Let's take a dot. Right now, we're looking at dots, right? And we notice that some of these dots almost look like they have a halo predominantly on one side, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to orient that phenomenon, and I'm going to turn it into a square and to illustrate what's happening, and then you can take that and, and turn it into a dot, all right? Now, let's say the web direction is this way, okay? Now, you are printing something like this. You're going to have a halo around this in a perfect world. Let's assume that there's some halo. It's going to be equally space around that like that, right? Now, if your plate surface is not traveling at the exact speed as the substrate, now this is the web direction, either this one is going to be shorter or this one is going to be shorter than the other or longer, okay? Or there's going to be no halo here and all the halo is going to be on the trailing end or on the leading end, all right? That's a function of the plate not traveling at the same speed as the substrate. So now the next thing comes, how can I tell whether the substrate is traveling faster than the plate or slower than the plate? Because I can tell you something. You say, if the substrate is traveling slower than the plate, maybe I got too much break on the back. If it's traveling faster, maybe I got too much tension on the front and I don't have my nip roll up and it's starting to pull the web through there. Maybe I have the wrong distortion, not distortion, maybe I have the wrong cylinder diameter for that gear condition and I'm causing a slipping condition. And as a matter of fact, I explore what happens when people try to bring down the impression to compensate for a substrate that is too thick, and the reduction of that diameter results in the plate surface traveling slower than a substrate. So here's how you tell. When a flexo plate makes an impression, and it yields that hail all the way around, that is traveling at the same speed. However, Let's say this is your dot or your image, right? And it's going around and it's hitting the impression cylinder. Now let's say that the impression cylinder is going faster or the substrate is going faster and this is the direction that the material is moving in, okay? The substrate is going faster than that dot. What will happen is that dot or that piece of the plate will hit the surface of the sub substrate but immediately as that's happening, there's a slippage going on. Yeah, right. Where that image leaves off, it's going to be the cleanest looking. Yeah. Okay? All while it's slurring. So, if that, if that plate hits the substrate, when it goes like this, the substrate, let's say it's going faster, the substrate starts to leave a smear, leave a smear, a smear, a smear, until it, everything leaves, and you have that cleaned up. Now, in that case, if the substrate is going faster, you have... Most of the halo manifests up here uh, on the top like that. You still have your standard halo around, but you have a halo towards the leading edge. The substrate is pulling up and it's clean here, okay? Conversely, if the substrate is going slower than the, uh, than the plate surface, you're going to have the opposite situation. You're going to have it like this, with all the halo is trailing, okay? The halo is trailing this, like this, the opposite. So. Synopsis, substrate, faster than plate, equals um, uh, leading halo. Substrate slower, equals trailing halo. That's the end. Nobody else will ever tell you that. So when you look, now, that's another thing that tells me is that, you know, we're, we're, we were looking at those dots oriented square, right? But the trailing aspect of it seemed to come almost like a comet this way. That's because that plate wasn't directly oriented with the, if you take it and you make that thing on this, it's going to be the correct orientation on the screen of, the, of that plate. But we just happen to be looking at it squarely with the screen square, so that's why that angle on that trailing or leading thing, okay? It's more common, probably, for substrates to drag through a machine than they are to be over 
sped through the machine unless you have a really unusual phenomenon with your cylinders or if you have a servo press or something like that, you're messing around with your speed somehow. But usually what you're going to have happen is your substrate is not pulling through fast enough through the machine, then it's pulling through too fast unless you got to get open and you're not controlling the tension. So thanks for your time, but I think that as consultants, as you guys go out there and see stuff, I think that it's good to have that little bit of information because it could shed some light. Maybe the substrate speed relative to the brake surface is important at that moment, and you can make that assessment right then and there. All right? Good info. Thank you. All right. All right. Thanks for your time. <laughs>